How you doing, everybody? This is Bones, back here in the Alternative Energies Labs. It's been quite a while since I posted a video. Uh, we've been doing a lot of other things. I got a lot of videos to get up. I just haven't got them time to edit them and whatnot. But in front of you, what you see here is a lot of research, and I mean a lot of research, on making biodiesel. There's uh, everything from a uh, kitchen biodiesel, uh, how to make uh, your uh, plants, uh, I mean everything from, from doing it right here in the kitchen versus uh, doing it out in, the, uh, out in the barn. So I've made some, it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to start a new series. We already have the HHO series, we have the woodworking series. We have the windmill series. I'm going to start the biodiesel series. What I'm going to do in this series here is I'll post the videos that I make. This one here is just going to be my first ones, the introduction to biodiesel and some of the uh, things that you're going to need uh, to start your biodiesel. And um, we'll move on to different things up and to the point where you'll make it right here in your own shop. Uh, so without dragging this on, We'll call this biodiesel 101. First thing you're going to need, obviously, is going to be used biodiesel or used oil, cooking oil. Now, I have got some from a neighbor. He does a lot of turkey frying, so I picked up this from him. Now, this is only this is only fried maybe one or two turkeys. This is this is a pretty uh, pretty clean oil. Uh, I've got some biodiesel. I don't or some used oil. That was black. I mean, it was nasty. Then I got some stuff that was white. So I mean, you can get some really nasty looking stuff. That uh, my neighbor gave me this. I got about uh, six two and a half gallon containers of this stuff. It's pretty cool. So that's what we're gonna. That's what when I show my testing. That's what I'm gonna keep that. When I do my testing, that's what I'm gonna get. I'll bring that. Okay. So that would be number one. Number two. This is gonna be easy for us HHO guys that are used to working with some of this stuff. So if you're not familiar with HHO, uh, then we'll go ahead and, again, I'm going to start from the very basic beginning and try and get this stuff together for everybody so we're all on the same page here. So um, the things that you're going to need are um, distilled water. It's got to be distilled water, again, just like the HHO. You need distilled water. You're going to need some form of lie okay if you read this it says hundred percent lie right there now this can be got at the Home Depot just make sure you read it and when you and when you read this here uh, right here at the very top of it it says 100% sodium hydroxide that's what you want you want 100% sodium hydroxide so just make sure that that's there that's your lie. You'll need that. Now you can use potassium hydroxide, either one. So, you know, I prefer to use uh, the the uh, which we call it the uh, NaOH only because it's easier to get. I can go right to Home Depot or Lowe's if I'm just doing small batches uh, and get this stuff. Versus potassium hydroxide is a little bit more costly and it's a little bit harder to get. Now, if you're doing huge batches of this stuff, actually, you would buy it in, you know, 40 pound, 40 pound bags. But at this point here, that's what you need. So you need your distilled water and you need your liquid Drano. With, with those two things, what you're going to make is um, what they call a tritation fluid. Okay. So it's T-I-T-R-A-T-I-N-G, tritation fluid. What this is, is this is exactly one liter of distilled water to one gram, one gram of lye. And it's got to be exact. That's what it's got to be. It, it needs to be that. A liter of distilled water to one gram of lye. That's the first thing you're going to need. So... You, you make your tritation fluid. You got that? 
The next thing you're going to need is some way to test pH. Now, there are several different ways to test it. This, I feel, is the easiest way. Go out and get yourself a swimming pool test kit. It doesn't have to be this. I just this is the one I had. This is the one I, you know, we found. It was cheap. Um, just go out and get yourself a swimming swimming pool test kit. Again, like I said, there's a few other ways of testing it, but this is the easiest way for us to test it. So they're your first. They're your first things you're gonna need. One, two, and three. Oh, I'm sorry. You need a few more things. You need the alcohol. Now this is important. Doesn't have to be any brand name. This is important. 91% isopropyl alcohol. Not the 70%. That's got to be isopropyl. You can't get any other kind. 91% isopropyl alcohol. You'll need that. And then you're going to need some heat. Okay, in the yellow can, not in the red can, in the yellow can. So it's gas line antifreeze and water remover. Okay, you need this stuff. One of the first things you need to do is do a tritation test on the on the uh, diesel fuel that you have. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna you already know how to do to make the tritation the tritating fluid. You you know how to make all that stuff already with this stuff here so what we'll do is we'll get a used sample of oil but I want to continue before I get ahead of myself here I want to continue on the stuff that you're gonna need okay but let me tell you let me stop right here before I go any farther if you think that this you can be nice and clean and fancy everything you see I have I've always got rags over my glass table I've got everything this is a messy messy project I don't care how clean you think you can keep it. This is a messy, messy, messy prod. You need to go and get yourself a box of those paper towel rags, rubber gloves, and eye protection. And you gotta keep this you gotta keep your shop ventilated. You gotta keep it ventilated. You all remember some from some of my HHO videos. I made this little hood vent up here. That's my little fan up there. It's not a hell of a lot, but it's enough to keep this room ventilated because obviously if I'm going to do something with a chemical smell, that's where I put it. Okay, sorry about moving that camera around, but that's it. Okay, now next you'll see on my back wall back here, I've got five little jars back there with my syringes in them. Okay, obviously none of them have points on them. Okay, methyl alcohol. Every chemical that you use needs its own syringe. Tritating syringe. Alcohol syringe. Used oil syringe. And new biodiesel syringe. Okay, so all of these need their own. And as you see what happens when you use plastic. See it? it, it you got to get yourself some glass beakers or something. Or shot glasses. If you got some old shot glasses, then go to the Dollar General store, get yourself some cheap shot glasses. That's where I'm going to go next time, and uh, so I can have them there. They're a whole lot cheaper than beakers are. So these are some of the things that you need um, to do your uh, to do your biodiesel. Uh, you're going to need a mixing vessel. Don't laugh. This works. Two-liter soda bottle. That is your mixing vessel. That's what we're going to use as a mixing vessel. Again, you remember now we're not making we're not making enough biodiesel that we're going to be throwing it in our Super Duty truck tonight and you know run it for a weekend. This is you're making a batch test of fuel to see how long or you know to make sure that your your calculations are right. 